Good evening and welcome to the People's Platform. Writing is a powerful tool that uh, generates connections, it invites reflection and critical thinking. It enables us to expand our own perceptions about our inner world and get a glimpse of the lived realities of others. Uh, reading also has the power to make us feel emotion, vulnerability, and it connects us over our shared humanity. Uh, tonight's guest is the joint winner of the 30th Gratian Prize bestowed by the Gratian Trust, founded by Booker Prize winner and promoting Sri Lankan creative writers. I'm so pleased to welcome to the studio Chiranti Rajapaksa. Good evening. Lovely to have you here with us and congratulations on your win. Thank you. Thank you, Sonali. It's lovely to be here. Uh, before delving into the conversation, Chiranti, let's speak a bit about your win. Uh, you won the prize uh, for your short story collection, Keeping Time and Other Stories, alongside Yudanje Vijay Ratna for his book, The Wretched and the Damned. It's a beautiful thing mm. to be uh, recognized and appreciated for your toil. Uh, how has the emotional journey been like? post this win as juxtaposed with life as you knew it <laughs> well, life as i know it goes on in spite of it mm -hmm. i'm just really, really i mean i'm just really really happy about the win i mean it's i think i've been i've been writing for a long time so writing is often something quite solitary it's something you do on your own and a lot of the time you don't actually know whether the things you write whether anybody feels a connection or reading it or what effect it has for other people so this is getting a prize like this, I think is really, a, really an aff a big affirmation and a big encouragement to keep writing. Absolutely. And you were shortlisted uh, yes. uh, before this for your book, Names and Numbers. Yes. yes. Speak a bit about that as well. Um, so this is Names and Numbers was my first collection of short stories. Mm -hmm. It was published in two th 2017 by Pereira Hussein Publishers. Um, and it's also, I think, this collection and the new collection are somewhat similar in the sense that I think both in the stories in both these focus on contemporary urban life in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And they are, I think they all center around everyday incidents. So I think there's a similarity that way. But um, I think the new collection maybe has changed somewhat in style. All yeah. right. So um, speaking about the themes that you are most drawn to. You speak about things like identity, uh, ethnic strife, war and conflict in Sri Lanka. How are you drawn to these um, areas and thematic, um, thematic areas? Mm. Um, I think probably like most writers who write fiction, it's not that I consciously decide these okay. are certain things uh, maybe that I'm going to focus on. But I think maybe you write, like often when I write, it starts with some sort of incident or some sort of uh, thing that I want, something that I'm curious about or something that I might be angry about or moved about. I mean, the, so all these things, you often it starts with some kind of incident like that, which develops into a story. So in the process of writing the story, you often figure out what kind of theme it's uh, on, like say, for example, I think in this first collection, Names and Numbers, uh, many of the, even the title story, Names and Numbers, it's about a family that's planning to leave Sri Lanka because of the con because of various ethnic issues at the time. So it touches on, 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 on themes like that. All right. Um, Chiranti, I would love for you to read an excerpt oh. from your new manuscript, award-winning manuscript. Please sure. go ahead. Okay. Uh, and before you do that, uh, if you could give uh, some context to okay. the short story. Sure. So I'm going to read from the new collection, Keeping Time and Other Stories, mm -hmm. which is still unpublished. So I'm going to be reading from one of the stories called Boarding House. And this story is about a young woman, Ambika. And she's been work she's working late and she's come home and found herself um, locked out of her boarding house. And she's waiting and she has nowhere to go. So she calls a friend to come and pick her up. And now she's waiting on the road for her friend to come. And this is the extract. It takes place uh, later towards somewhere in the middle of the story. Okay. So, um, Ambika stood well back from the road, trying to make herself invisible. She could still be seen. Her butter yellow sari made sure of that. Shachikala had said she would come to collect her in about 20 minutes time. Wait there, she had said. There was a slight suggestion of rain in the air, a whiff of something, 
A breeze blew across the road, stirring up piles of newspaper and an empty fish can which rattled. She hoped it wouldn't rain. What time would Shashikala come? She would probably come with her husband. Ambika had met Shashikala's husband only once, a few months ago, when he had come to pick her up from work. He was a silent man who had looked slightly impatient at Ambika's chattering. Would he look impatient today? Akka. She jumped. She turned around and the figure was almost next to her, a dark sillout. She could hear someone breathing and the smell of burning and she almost screamed, stepping back, the impractically sandaled feet stumbling over the ground. Akka, wait, it's me. He held out his hands, offering something, a plate. It reminded Ambika of the way she made offerings when she went to the temple. But the plate held not fruit, but something fried, the smell of food. We had some leftover and I saw you standing there. I thought you would like to have. You always buy from us. She stopped. Her eyes were adjusting to the darkness and she could make him out now. A flame flickered, flighting up his face, the boy who always served her when she went to buy dinner from the shop. She had never noticed his face before, perhaps because he was always running around giving the customers orders. The paper plate was within reach. He reached forward. She hesitated. Then she shook herself. This was just the boy at the shop, the one she spoke to every day. She took a piece. It was paratha, still hot, not long off the pan. It tasted wonderful. Take some more. He didn't ask why she was standing on the road and she was grateful for that. He seemed to think it perfectly normal that she should be there, that she should of course be standing on the road in the butter yellow sari that she had started the day in. And as she ate, some of that normality seemed to rub off on her too. And the road was not a place of ghostly shadows, but just the road outside her boarding, the road where she walked every day to catch the bus. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Chiranti, speak to us about where you draw your inspiration to write stories of these realities of people whose lives you do not lead? Okay, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, inspiration, I, I'd like to think of it as, it, as in cu like more like a curiosity. I think all, most fiction is trying to imagine uh, living as somebody else. So I think it often starts with curiosity about maybe somebody else's life or about something you can't understand or you can't explain or even sometimes emotion like anger or at something that you like things that happen that you wish you could change. So I think a lot of it starts from that and, um, and then slowly some of these things become stories. Um, like if I have to say for example, um, the, one of the stories in my entire story collection, Keeping Time and other stories, keep, the title story Keeping Time is about, a, about someone who works, um, makes a living mending watches and works with his hands. So I was curious about somebody who might lead a li very different life from the one I did. So I think it's, it just comes out of curiosity and wanting to explore certain things and trying to understand certain things. Um, Shiranti, writing and indeed creative writing can be a very powerful political tool, a very powerful advocacy tool. In your opinion, when you write, do you also see this? Do you also want your writing to be a political tool? Mm, I wouldn't say exactly a political tool. Okay. But I think it's inevitable that in the process of writing, you inevitably end up on end up commenting on certain things through right. the writing, um, because I write fiction. Like I don't write. It's it, this at least this collection is fiction. So I think if you're writing as a political tool, that's more the area of propaganda or nonfiction. But say for example, um, say okay, say for example, one of the color stories in this collection, Keeping Time 
it is about a man who is he is just about a job interview the next day and there is a temp loudspeaker from a temple going on all night and then he gets really angry and he tries to deal with it but there are people telling him no you should not oppose this obviously because it is a religious thing. Mm -hmm. So there are things of, there are, it raises questions about religion and what is right and wrong and the, the power exercised by all these things in our lives. So all those things do come in but uh, that was, but when I was writing the story I was just telling a story. Okay. So it was not a conscious thing to say I want to advocate for certain thing or like anything right. like that. For example, um, one, of the, one of the examples that I can think of is um, Animal Farm, mm, uh, George yes. Orwell's Animal Farm which is a work of fiction but it really isn't, yes. that's, that's the last thing it is. Yes. Um, however, you say that it is not a conscious um, effort on your part to make it a political tool right uh, now. I would not say a political tool but it is, I would say like when you are writing a story you have an idea in your head of the things you want to, that you have some idea of sense of the things that you are commenting on. Mm -hmm. So but I think it is more like asking a question in, at least in the things that I was trying to write. It is right. not saying advocating for a particular position but asking a question, more like asking a question and leaving it for I think maybe for the reader to come up with to like draw what com conclusions they will from it. Beautiful. We are in conversation with a joint winner of the Gratian Prize for 2022, uh, Chiranti Rajapaksa. Uh, Chiranti, your day job is as a legal researcher. Where does creative writing fit in? Um, well, I have been doing diff various different kinds of jobs to be honest okay. for a while. But writing has always been I think a pretty much a central part of my life. Okay. Um, so I have studied law, I studied law and dentistry. Um, so currently I am working as a legal and policy researcher with LearnAsia. Mm -hmm. So yes, so I think well basically all the everyday experiences I think do fit into my writing in the sense that uh, everything you experience, all the people you interact with all do influence how you think and I think in the end what you write about. I think probably the challenge is finding time to write because you have to fit it around pract practical everyday li uh, mm -hmm. things. So what that is, is always your, challenging. What is your writing process like? Okay, so for me it is a process, the process takes quite some time usually. Okay. Um, so when I am writing, uh, usually I like to like try to finish a first draft and as I said those, the, first, the stories usually come from sort of some sort of incident and I do not have a plot beforehand, I wish I could, I know some people do but it is something I struggle with. So I kind of figure out what the story is as I am writing. So and after doing a first draft I usually like to keep it away for a bit like a couple of months and then come back and reread it as um, I try to read it as an outsider which is really hard to do and then I reread it and try to edit it and try to see what works and what does not. Okay. Okay. Um, Chiranti, let us speak a bit about the English literary uh, space in Sri Lanka. Um, we have had a Booker Prize winner uh, last year, Shehan Karnat Tilaka. Uh, Yudanje Vijayaratna won this Gratian Prize uh, along with you. Do you think that um, Sri Lankan writing in English has come of age or is coming of age? Mm, I, well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not quite sure what that actually I mean implies, but I'm just really, really happy because I think Sri Lanka writing maybe is finally getting the attention that it's always deserved, mm -hmm. and so I'm just it was just it's just and it was just really nice that Shehan Karnatalika got the Booker Prize, obviously, because I've been a big fan of his work for a long time, okay. and I think it's just nice to see writers getting recognition and getting publicity, and but. But I think there has been Sri Lankan writing for a while in Absolutely. Sri Lanka um, and I think even this time the Gratian, I mean it is nice even in the Gratian shortlist this time there was a lot of diversity. There were two poetry collections and then my one which was short stories and then you have done this which was uh, a novel, um, speculative fiction though I do not like putting things into genres and uh, I think one thing even the I think even the something commented on by the Mesh Gunasekar in the citation was that uh, I mean they selected two winners this time and he commented that it showed the ways, the varied ways in which 
it was possible which be writers in, in Sri Lanka are writing are writing about Sri Lanka now and I thought that was a nice comment because my collection is short stories and Yudanjas is fiction is a novel and I think in style it's probably both they are very different works mm -hmm. but we are also looking at, but we are both looking at Sri Lanka in different ways and I thought that was really nice and um, the so I, yeah there is a lot of writing coming out I would like to I mean it would be it would be nice also if the editing and publishing industries also would also like I think this uh, would also develop like come develop more in the same way because it's still really hard to get feedback for your writing I think here um, to get feedback and um, as I mean I was lucky because with my first collection it was published by Pureira Hussein Publishers who actually edited the Manor book for me and in 2017 when I was shortlisted the judges uh, in the 2017 judges actually gave me a lot of feedback particularly Michelle de Cresta who helped me a lot so I think all those things were a lot of encouragement for me to keep writing mm -hmm. but I think we don't yet have a, like a very big publishing or editing editing industries to really support writers. Right. So in, in English yes right so that ecosystem yes. needs to be nurtured I would love to see that develop more because I think that really helps okay um, so at the beginning of this interview you um, you alluded to the fact that your writing is predominantly about urban contemporary life uh, in Sri mm. Lanka and you speak of everyday incidents mm. um, what is the magic you see in uh, what is the novelty you see in the mundane um, I think those are just the things that I find interesting and that I'm drawn to when I write I mean I would love to write different kinds of books as well I mean I would so I really like to like I don't know I really like reading detective stories I like fantasy I like SF but when I sit down to write this is the thing that comes into my head so I mean that is so that's these are the kind of stories that so far at least I have ended up writing so I mean I that's probably it's probably just something within myself I mm -hmm. think you know, I, I mean I probably find that uh, I probably find it myself a bit difficult to answer. Okay, okay. Um, since you said that the um, publishing and editing um, aspects need to be nurtured, uh, especially when it comes to Sri Lankan writing, um, do you think that the state has a greater role to play in uplifting uh, the creative writing industry in Sri Lanka if so what role can it play what are the mechanisms that you think need to be put in place mm, that's a bit of a tough question to answer I honestly don't know actually that mm. because I I am I don't know in detail how it functions in other countries I just can see the experience that just being part of the creation and getting feedback for my writing from other writers who sure. really know their what they like from getting the feedback from other writers and working from the other writers I can see that the difference that it has made to me so I would love for like more people to really be able to have that because absolutely yes because feedback is a must and editing mm -hmm. proofreading proof editing copy yes. editing all of these aspects need to uh, be brought in uh, and a support yes. system needs to be and it's just collaboration sometimes it's mm -hmm. nice to be able to have somebody else to understand what you're trying to do and have a, I mean writing is solitary mm -hmm. so most of it you just have to do in yourself I mean I think the basically you just have to sit down and write the thing so there's really no way around that mm -hmm. but later in when you're later in the process when you're trying to actually define it and improve it that's where the, the support, support of others can be yeah, useful. No absolutely um, Talking about um, the importance of creative writing as uh, an escape mechanism, um, children need to be taught the, the magic of reading. Mm. Um, how do you think an appreciation for or love of literature and the arts needs to be inculcated in children? Mm. Well, I suppose I can only ca comment from my experience. Absolutely. Really. Um, 
I think basically in my case, I was just around books all the time. Okay. But uh, so I just found books. I basically read anything that I found interesting. Um, and I think libraries helped, uh, helped a lot. Okay. Um, because um, I think just being exposed to books and having access to books and also having, I never had anybody telling me what I should read or not. So I basically just went to the library and read whatever I wanted to read. Okay. And I'm sure I didn't understand half of what I was reading at the time, which is fine. Because I think it was just the freedom of being able to read what you wanted to was, uh, was something I really enjoyed. And um, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'd also like to ask you, Chiranti, um, when in your writing you speak about um, aspects which are uh, very much Sri Lankan, uh, how do you bring in these nuances from the vernacular media mm -hmm. to English uh, without the meaning of it getting lost in translation? Mm. Um, that actually is a big challenge and I don't actually... I don't myself know how successful or not it is. I guess that readers have to judge um, because you're often, uh, well, 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 obviously we are right, um, the book is written in English, but the conversations, everything that I'm writing would actually in reality probably take place in two languages. So maybe sometimes it's in color, sometimes in English. Me, So um, it's difficult. I mean, I sometimes try to use, like I automatic, I don't think it's a question of trying, sometimes automatically you do certain use, you use certain words or single words that, uh, colloquial words and things in your, in the writing. But uh, it's actually a challenge that I still am kind of grappling with because okay. I, I actually don't, it's something that I think about quite a lot. Okay. So what's the next step? Uh, in your writing journey? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll definitely keep writing. So there's a couple of other things I'm working on. Um, I've been working on a couple of other short, some other short stories. Okay. And also a draft novel, but then it feels really unfinished and I have, I have quite a lot of unfinished things in my laptop as well. Okay, so you have multiple drafts? Yes, I okay. have various things that are, like I write a lot and some of this, some of it works out into things that get finished some of it doesn't okay so yes and it's you need category. to work on uh, publishing your yes. Uh, yes. book yes, current book too <laughs> all right um thank you very much mm. uh chiranti rajapaksa good luck with uh, everything and thank you for joining us <laughs> thank you it is great to be here thank you absolutely thank you for watching right. us we'll see you again next week with the single edition of the people's platform have a safe weekend good night Thank <laughs> you.